strike, yes, yeah, slash right. forward stroke. On the Chinese menu, you know it, what is the euphemism translated from the Mandarin as fragrant meat referred to? That is John again. Chow mein. <laughs> if only it were. No, <coughs> I'm afraid it, it's dog. Um, whether or not it's Jack Russell, I have no idea. <laughs> we'll move on. Which eponymous heroine played with fire, kicked a hornet's nest oh, and had a dragon tattoo? John again. Did you press out of Dupuy Trin's contractor there? there? <laughs> yes, yeah. Alison. Um, I assume you mean the girl. The girl. Yes. Yeah, I need Which a name though. It's uh, it's Solanda. Um, I can't think of her first name. I'll give you that anyway. That is right. It's Lisbeth Solanda. What an answer it is. You buzz, please. Is the element with the shortest name? That's it, Rand. Tin. Tin is right. Yes. What is the name for the area of West London, just north of Paddington, centred around the junction of the Grand Union Canal and Regent's Canal, and renowned for its rather bohemian and artistic atmosphere? That's Edmund again. Little Venice. Little Venice is absolutely right. Bohemian and artistic. Very, very expensive would be a more accurate <laughs> description. So, thanks to uh, a magnificent charge by Edmund there in that final round, the students have a very fine 33, but the Dons are this week's winners on 38. So, uh, very good performance there. Commiserations to the students, and never mind, because in the immortal words of Richard III, so wise, so young, they say, do never live long. <laughs> I'm not saying the Dons would have murdered you in the tower if you had one. <laughs> but let's be on the safe side. That's all for this show. Thanks to both our teams, you at home, and our audience here. That's it from The Third Degree. Goodbye. That was The Third Degree, coming this week from the University of Leicester. The chairman was Steve Punt. It was devised and produced by David Tyler, and the program was a positive production for BBC Radio 4. And next week, the third degree comes from Bath Spa University. We'll have the yogurt to hand okay, yeah. in the as Tim Hayward samples a range of fiery chilies. Once it was a top-down affair. The guarded <laughs> profits of professional <laughs> journalists, producers <laughs> and editors. <laughs> now, thanks yeah, to the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm fucking... ...more democratic, selected and even made <laughs> <by> <laughs> As exciting as it is, does this democracy of news have a more worrying side? Are we romanticizing the new media? Risky. We've been growing chilies in this country for at least five hours. Uh, uh, culturally, a lot of the immigrant communities so have been was eating 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 chilies ever since they've been here. And then even with the white middle class people, we've been going to Indian restaurants and takeaways for donkey's years. So the chilies right. have always been here. But recently there's been this huge increase in interest in chilies. That was Michael Michaud of Sea Spring Seeds. He's a culinary ethnobotanist who grows chilies on the Dorset coast and holds the current record for the world's hottest chili, the Dorset Naga. But more from him later. 20 years ago, chili for the average Brit was a dry red powder in the spice rack or a sloppy bowl of Mexican mince. If they knew a bit about cooking, they might have been aware that it was the spicy hot fruit of the genus capsicum that put the eye-watering kick in a vindaloo. But otherwise, it seemed that chili, like garlic, was not our sort of thing. But boy, how things have changed. Our damp northern European countryside is now peppered with chilli farms. Small country towns in unlikely counties host chilli festivals, and at least half a dozen growers of serious scale now supply the UK food industry. So what happened? I'm not, I should make clear, some macho lover of ludicrously hot food. But uh, such is my I dedication to, to the food programme. No, I want to be learning how to they taste more chilies, imbibing leaky yeah. hot sauces. Oh, he doesn't eat. 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 He Thomas Inga Myers. I'm generally obsessed with chilies of all types. I'm generally obsessed with chilies of all types. 
countries. So this is not just the Mexican tradition of chilies, this is right way across the world. Well, well, chilies originated from Mexico, over 200 varieties, amazing kind of flavour and taste. Of course they spread, so you've got the Kashmiri No, this is, this is, yeah, it's, it's, it was a kind they can't say when it's, when it's something, a, a, a perfect, one of wins are within, within 24 hours. that region of China. Um, I've got chilies, Thai cookery, Vietnamese cookery, even Spanish cookery. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a pandemic. 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 These days, much of his work involves testing the heat of UK-grown chilies for supply to supermarkets. I see what you're saying. They stock mainly generic varieties and what a consistent heat level. Or the yeah, 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 I see what you're saying. Look, 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 Oh, by the way, if it's a, a feather in the cap to have the world's hottest chili. The hottest chili now is well in excess of one million Scoville uh, units. The strength of the chili's heat is measured using the Scoville scale, which was developed in 1912 by an American pharmacist, Wilbur Scoville. It was based on an alcoholic extraction and then sequential dilution in sugary water. So in, in essence, the more dilute the solution was, which still retained heat, greater than the normal scope of scale. In modern analysis, we can be more accurate, we can use HPLC to measure the actual concentrations of the heat giving compounds, and then this is related back to the Scoville scale. Uh, HPLC, or high performance liquid chromatography, is a modern scientific technique to separate compounds within a mixture and then quantifying them using UV light. The concentration of the heat giving compounds, a group of compounds called capsaicinoids, is directly related to the heat of the chili. I think very few people could tolerate the very hottest chilies. In actual fact, a, a chili of 100,000 Scoville units is, is more than most people can take. So a chili in excess of a million Scoville units is probably excessive. But a lot of people seem to enjoy the extreme heat. Even Thomasina Myers confesses she was a fiery chili head in her youth. Obviously I love a bit of hot Thai jungle curry and that kind of addictive sweat you get when you eat something really really hot. I definitely am subscribed to that. But uh, the amazing thing about chilies is they have such different flavours. So if you look at Mexican food, 200 varieties, a lot of them aren't hot at all. So the ancho chili is a dry red chili. The poblano is its fresh form, and then it goes to dried and ancho. And it's quite sweet, and it's really quite mild. So you can use a lot of them in a sauce or a marinade. They go very well, beef or lamb. Oh, no, and you'll get this wonderful, quite rounded, robust, sweet flavour that will add an enormous kind of depth and character to a sauce without really adding any heat. If you want heat, you'd add other chilies. In, in my mind, your most sort of famous for is you've actually taken Mexican food out of that macho or sort of curry world and you've actually made it into something that's a lot more refined and a lot more interesting to a lot more people. Was that intentional to take that and sort of draw the heat from it? Yeah, I mean, funnily enough, I was the most macho person when I first traveled around Mexico at age 18, trying to eat the fiery ceviches and trying to prove that I could eat the mannest hottest, fieriest salsas on every kind of table. And I love, I love those blow your head off salsas more than anyone else probably. I would definitely say that there are some of those salsas you can get off the shelf now. Blow your head off so much, they kill, they basically kill your taste buds. And if you talk to experts on you know, what chilies actually do to your, to your taste buds, they do actually kind of scorch them, literally. So if you really are eating something that's so hot, you are in the end going to blow all the flavour out of the dish. Very few people can eat a really hot chili. You might well think that few would be daft enough to try. But there are those who pride themselves on handling the burn, taking a macho delight in the extreme heat experience and the almost narcotic endorphin rush it can produce. Some of the hottest chili preparations are designed as food additives rather than to be poured on food. They're prepared entirely from chili extracts and are arguably less akin to cuisine than chemical warfare. 
So we're in the um, otherwise serene surroundings of the Corn Exchange in Bristol. And I'm in one corner, which is Dr. Venorium's hot sauce emporium. Your pain is our pleasure. And I am surrounded by the, the red bottles. We have Professor Far Pounder's colon figure, which looks rather charming. Uh, pain is good, which you probably have a sauce. That's only a, a, a six on the heat level, so I can probably manage that one myself. Hanging with the same, pure death and Zulu Zulu Peri Peri. Uh, a bullet, this one over here, and this one is in a coffin shaped box. I think we're detecting a, a, a theme here, but this is probably my favourite here. Um, pain 100%. I think that just, that just sums up where you're going to go with this one. scoring system here where they, they start over there with the quiet number ones. Yeah. They work up here to the number tens and then there's a yeah. whole other rack. Yeah. Uh, ten, ten plus, 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 there's <laughs> been places. Okay, so, so I mean, how, do, how do people consume this? Okay, so it's, 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 it's genuinely a cooking product, or are most of the people that are doing this. We have both. We've got a very, very sort of committed, hardcore bunch of chili head customers who literally to those consuming chili is something that they have to do rather than they choose to do. It's like culinary crack, is what I quite often describe it. Okay, that's um, that, yes. Yeah, yeah. But, 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 yeah, but it is because food to, to the likes of me and, and to those sort of customers is just pretty bland and boring, to be frank, without some kind of firepower on it. Um, and to answer your point, yes, we do, of course we do, we get people who come in and you know, quite a few bottles of psycho juice, extreme ghost pepper, which is 600,000 scopes tend to go on stag do's and rugby tours and all the rest of it. I did warn them, but you know, once they leave here, it's up to them what we do with it. I'm meeting in this. There's there's a there's a fair sort of heavy metal crossover. There's quite a military thing going on. There seems to be sportsmen. Uh, is it spreading out of that strangely I've got male well. niche? I've got, yeah, seriously. I mean, I've got you know, I don't want to put an age on it, but I've got a regular a couple of customers actually come here who are you know, late fifties, early sixties, if they're a day. So and they regularly buy buy chili sauce. They don't go for the mad mad stuff, but they regularly consume chili sauce. You've got to bear in mind as well, a lot of people now are more widely travelled. I mean, this has got a lot to do with it. I mean, I've seen a massive, huge increase in business over the last sort of four or five years. You know, people are going over to Thailand and they're going to Vietnam and they're going here, there and everywhere. They are consuming the local sort of like dishes over there. And a lot of them, yes, do contain chili pepper. And people are now becoming more accustomed to it. There's no question about it. We specialise more for the hard, hardcore chili head. But I love that side of it. I love this new Shiatsu aspect of it. 